2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's a lot in those two verses. It says that we become partakers of the divine nature. He's spoken about grace being available. He's spoken about escaping from the corruption, or escaping the corruption that is in the world through lust. He's spoken about knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says we should grow in that knowledge. And eventually, the bottom line, the conclusion, is that we are partakers of the divine nature. Tonight, we're looking at the message, the privileged partakers of the divine nature. The privileged partakers of the divine nature. Possessing the divine nature makes us act like God. Whenever we read the scriptures, we should interpret that scripture and ask ourselves, what does it mean? If we add the divine nature, what's the implication of that? As we look at the whole world, the earth created by God, everything in existence partakes of the same nature, of the same powers, of the same attributes, of the same characteristics, that belong to its particular, peculiar species or kind. The fish will have the attributes of fish and will be able to swim. If there is a fish that has the nature of the fish and is not able to swim, that will be surprising and shocking. The birds also partake of every bird-like faculty. And therefore, every bird, because of the nature, is able to fly. And so it is with the human race, with human beings. When we have the nature of human beings, of Adam, we're able to stand, we're able to walk, we're able to hear, we're able to see, we're able to speak. And when we are born in a particular locality, we take on the customs, the language, and the understanding of that locality because we have the nature of the people in that locality. The same thing in the family of God, born of God, purged by Christ, indwelt by the Spirit, we have the promise of the divine nature. We have the privilege of the divine nature. We have the power of the divine nature. When we say divine nature, what does that translate to? The spiritual attributes of God, spiritual nature. The righteous character of God, a righteous nature. And the supernatural possibilities of God, the divine nature, supernatural. Let's see what the scripture says. We're looking at Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 40. Luke chapter 6, verse 40. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect Everyone that is matured, 
everyone that is complete, everyone that looks like the master shall be as his master. I should be asking myself, you should be asking yourself, how much am I near to the nature of Christ, the nature of God? I, I'm born again, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I have the Bible, and I have the privilege to pray, and I have all these promises. How much have all these things helped me to attain and to remain of the nature of God? John chapter 14. Actually, Christ expects that as we are believers, with what he was going to do at Calvary, and with what promises he has given us, he expects we will be like him. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Because when I get to the Father, I will present my sacrifice and blood, the substitutionary sacrifice before the Lord. And I will tell the Lord, you sent me to the world to raise up sons like me and to bring them to glory and to virtue. I have done it. And because of that, because I go to the Father, you, my disciples, you will not remain with the nature of man, human nature. You're going to have the divine nature and the works I do, you will do. And greater works than these you will do because I go to my Father. Now, I want you to compare two verses of Scripture. The first we have Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Before I read this verse, whenever we read any verse of Scripture, that goes beyond our present experience, we shouldn't dismiss it and say, that cannot be true because I'm not there. Are you saying because you are not there, you will never get there? Are you saying because you are not there, nobody in the body of Christ all over the world will ever get there? Are you saying because you are not there, the promise of God cannot be fulfilled? Are we going to measure the promise of God and the height of the privilege with your experience? Or rather, wouldn't you say, this is where I am now, and this is what God has provided for me, and because of that, I will rise up, and you will rise up. Look at these two verses now. The first one, Luke chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Can you say that? With God, nothing shall be impossible. Notice the last four words. Nothing shall be impossible. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, we're reading from verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, your present stage, your present status. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and 
it shall remove. And tell me, nothing shall be impossible unto you. The same phrase used about God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. As he imparts his nature unto us, his power unto us, and he imparts unto us the result of Calvary, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Any amen? Now, notice these two verses again. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. And please understand, when we go to school, we finish primary school. We don't stop there. We know there is more. We go to high school, secondary school, college. We don't stop there. We know there is more. We even go to the university, and yet we know there could be more. And so, a person that knows there is more, he'll say, I'm not there today, but I will aspire. I'm not there today, but I will ask. I'm not there today, but I'm going to advance. You will advance. We're looking at Mark chapter 10, verse 27. In Mark chapter 10, verse 27, And Jesus looking upon them says, With men it is impossible. Look at this, but with God. But with God. All things are possible. Notice those words. All things are possible. Those four words again. We're looking at chapter 9, verse 23. Chapter 9, verse 23. You're looking at those four words, all things are possible. Verse 23, chapter 9, verse 23, Mark. Jesus says unto him, If thou canst believe, tell me, all things are possible to him that believeth. The same words used concerning God. All things are possible with God. All things are possible to him who believes. Again, you're not there yet. We're not there yet. But is it going to be that through, whole, through the whole generation of the Christian people that Jesus has saved, he has sanctified, he has filled with the Holy Ghost, is it going to be that nobody, no single person will attain to what Christ has promised? And he said, nothing shall be impossible. All things are possible. You have the divine nature and the works I do ye shall do. And greater works than these shall ye do because I go to the Father. Is the new covenant actually better than the old covenant? In the old covenant, God healed three million people. There was not one feeble person among them. Old covenant. In the old covenant, the rod of Aaron, of Moses, swallowed up all the rods of the magicians. In the old covenant, Joshua said, Son, stand there. I'm having, I'm ha I need a longer time in battle. In the old covenant, 185,000 enemies of the children of Israel were slain in one night. In the old covenant, the Red Sea parted. In the old covenant, River Jordan parted for them. In the old covenant, the Jericho walls were there. And they went round. And without striking or knocking anything, all the walls came down. 
is it going to be that the new covenant will not even be up to the old covenant? In the new covenant, Jesus Christ walked on the water and Peter said, if that's you, bid me come. He said, come. And he came out of the boat and walked on the water. New covenant. In the new covenant, the dead were raised. Is it going to be that the generation of today will not match the old covenant, will not match the new covenant, and we're going to remain at the lowest level of Christianity? God forbid. Divine nature. And that possibility will be done in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. If it's going to be like that, somebody must wake up. Number one, you acknowledge, acknowledge that it is possible. Because if you never think about it, if you never acknowledge it, and you just read your Bible, read your Bible, thank God we don't steal anymore. Thank God we don't commit immorality anymore. Thank God our lives are plain and clear. Thank God we're living the normal, normal, normal life. Even Enoch in Genesis lived a life like that 300 years. So what are we talking about? Even Samuel lived a life like that. Even Daniel lived a life like that. And this is the new covenant where we we'll rise higher. You will rise higher. Number one, acknowledge it's possible. This divine nature will produce something we have never seen in Jesus' name. Number two, you must aspire, aspire. You see, it's there. But there must be something that stirs you up and you say, I'm going to have, I'm not going to remain the way I am now. You will not remain the way you are now. You know, if we only moved up, an inch every day, an inch every day, an inch every day in uh, 12 days will move up one foot. In about a month and a few days will move up one yard. But we must make the effort. We must believe you'll be better than you are today. You aspire, number three, is to ask. Because it says, we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. Look at our educational system again. After we finish primary school, the parents and that pupil will ask, will demand. They will look for a higher school and place the child there. And the child might be average, but because the child is aspiring because the child is acknowledging and because the child is asking the one that was you know just a few days ago didn't know the alphabet will be having a, a college degree and the one that didn't know in the christian life how to do the works of Christ. I'm talking about my people now. You will have a degree that will have a decree in Jesus' name. You acknowledge, you aspire, you ask, you accept. After asking, you must begin to thank God. And you will not just be asking and asking and asking and it's never done you will accept. You will, the next word, appropriate. That's for me. The Lord said, he gave me the divine nature. And the divine nature made me to escape and also now to have the attributes, the transferable attributes of God. And I appropriate that. It's mine. I said it's mine. And then you advance, advance. In what you do, raise it up. In places you go, lift it up. Because if you have something and you don't use it, it will atrophy. That is, it will go dead. 
your will already now you have acknowledged you have aspired you have asked you have accepted you have appropriated advance do something more than what you did yesterday because if you don't do today more than you did yesterday you will not know the power is there the power is there and then you activate activate it activate it don't allow it to remain dormant activate it you are going higher in jesus name who is going higher i said who is going higher talk with your mouth who is going higher you are the one you will go higher in jesus name as I said, we're talking about the privileged partakers of the divine nature. Let's go back to what happened in the past. Number one, the proof and fruit of the depraved nature. The proof and fruit of the depraved nature. Point number two, the promise and faith for the divine nature the promise and the faith for the divine nature number three our progress through focus on his displayed nature demonstrated nature his disclosed nature his declared nature our progress through focus on his displayed nature let's come back to number one the proof and fruit of the depraved nature let's see the beginning in chapter one of genesis genesis chapter one reading from verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image that was the intention of God. That was the purpose and the plan of God. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man how tell me in his own image that's the nature of god that's the divine nature in the image of god created he him male and female not only for the men not only for the brothers for the men and the women, the brothers and the sisters. Thank God you have your portion today. So God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them. And it says the image of God was in them. Both of them. What then happened? Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? They had eaten the forbidden fruit. And because of that, they lost the divine image, the divine nature. They became naked. And you know the curse that came. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5. In chapter 6, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. They had lost the image of God. Exodus chapter 32. We're reading from verse 7. Exodus 32, verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down. For thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted 
themselves. The Lord wanted to circumcise their heart so that they would love him with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. And the nature of God, righteous, supernatural, spiritual, will be in every one of them again. But they corrupted themselves. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you will see quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. This now for the whole world, everyone, dead in trespasses and sins. The nature of God was no more there, wherein in time past he walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, instead of having the divine nature, they now add the depraved nature, the nature of Satan. Verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by, by what? Out aloud. By nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Nature, the satanic nature, the evil nature, had now come to everyone on earth. The depraved nature, the proof of the depraved nature, and the fruit of the depraved nature, Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That is, the evil went lower than the human nature. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over unto a reprobate mind. That's the depraved nature to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. Ephesians 4, reading from verse 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk no more as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, separated, cut off from the life of God. They lost the divine nature through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all on cleanness with greediness. It's very clear from the word of God that those who are not saved, they are part of the world and they have the depraved nature that's exactly why Christ came. He wanted to restore what we have lost. And he wanted to take away the depraved nature so that the divine nature will come. You will experience that divine nature. You will operate that divine nature. 
and that divine nature will be visible in your life in Jesus' name. And if it's going to be so, it must start one day. I said it must start one day. There must be one day you pick up yourself and you say, things cannot continue like this. This divine nature must be active in my life. I must be operative in my life. I must be able to demonstrate that now I'm a child of God and every offspring of any kind, any, anyone will demonstrate the characteristics of the parent and God is your father and Jesus is your savior and the Holy Ghost is the power that lives inside you. When I believe something, I know how I respond. Point number two now, the promise and faith for the divine nature. The promise and the faith for the divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power. According as his divine power. He has given unto us. He has given unto us. It's not for us to acknowledge it. It's now for us to aspire to what he has given us. It's now for us to ask and to accept and to appropriate and to ascend, advance, and to activate. It has been given unto us, how many things there? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us, through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of him. How do we know what he has given us? By the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us promises, precious promises, great precious promises, exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers, possessors of the divine nature, you will be a partaker. We shall all be possessors in Jesus' name. Whenever we come to a higher level, like we come to secondary school, in educational pursuit, we don't go back to primary one again, always, always, always learning the alphabet. That's done. Let it rest. We don't go to the little, little things we used to know in the primary. If you're going to add, multiply, divide, but mass, what you have in the bracket and all the other things. We don't go back to that. We just know that all that is given, all that is settled. Now, it is what we're learning today we focus on. And so, as you come to the Word of God, and it says, He has given to us the divine nature. And it is through the knowledge of Him that called us to glory and to virtue. You know, sometimes uh, when we say that God has given us everything, everything in life, everything in godliness, and we can be holy, and we can remain holy. If somebody says, but how about so and so, who backs leech? Are we going to measure the whole revelation of the Bible with one person in your locality that backslid. When we say that God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, and then we say he will keep us healthy. He will keep you healthy. Then somebody will look at the side and say, okay, if it's going to keep us healthy, how about so and so that was sick? 
We're not happy that they are sick. We're not condemning anyone because they're sick. We're saying that we're not going to measure the promises of God by the experience of so-and-so. If so-and-so will wake up and rise up, he will realize he has given unto us great and precious promises. And by those promises, we're partakers of the divine nature. And that divine nature can become, can begin to activate and can become active in every life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. And he says, having escaped, having escaped the corruption, the corruption that is moral, the corruption of the human flesh, the corruption of life. We have escaped the corruption. Sickness comes to corrupt the body. Temptation comes to corrupt the mind. Satan comes to corrupt our mind, our intelligence, and he wants to be the Lord over every life, every time. But I say no. You say no. I said you will say no. We will escape the corruption in the world in Jesus' name. The promise and the faith for the divine nature. Let's come back now to Genesis again, chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Here is what Christ has come to restore. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. What do you have? Let them have dominion. I said, What do you have? Dominion. And then in verse 27, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. Christ is able to restore, to repair whatever Adam lost. In our lives, in our ministries, it will restore everything we lost in Adam. Think about it. If God can keep you free from sin in one day, he can do it in the following day. He can do it for a whole week. He can do it every day, every day, one day at a time. If God can keep you strong and healthy one day, he can do it two days, right? He can do it seven days in the week. He can do it the rest of your life. At least he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which have brought upon the Egyptians. I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. You are healed in Jesus' name. Let's come to Romans chapter 8. Divine nature. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's God's intention. That's God's plan. That's God's promise. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the first among many brethren. So that... I will be like him, you will be like him. We shall be like him in Jesus' name. Uh, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We're reading from verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? It talks about the temple of God and it's talking about you. 
that you are now the temple of God, for ye are the temple of the living God. Why don't we read that in a personal way? For I am the temple of the living God. I'll come back to that verse, but let me remind you. The ark of God in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, representing the presence of God, was taken by the Philistines. And they put that ark of God in their temple. And there was the idol of those people of Ashdod. What's the name of that idol? Dagon. And no high priest was there. And no priest was there. Just the ark. The following morning, that Dagon fell on the ground. God lives on the inside of you. Accept it. Accept it. Appropriate it. And tell the Lord the ark was there and Dagon fell. You live inside me, every Dagon will fall. And then the following day, they set up again that Dagon. And the following day, when they woke up, the head of Dagon was cut up. The arms were cut up. The legs were cut up. Dagon was finished. And if God lives inside you, you must understand it. You must acknowledge it. You must aspire that the presence of God inside you, Dagon must fall. And you must ask the Lord, I appropriate this. You live inside me. Greater is he that lives in you than he who lives in the world. You begin to have new experiences. Everywhere you go, when you get near, you come now to the new covenant, and Peter was walking by the street, and sick people, maimed people, paralyzed people, demonized people, mad people, they brought them just for the shadow of Peter to come over them. What happened? I said, what happened? They were healed. They were delivered. The Holy Ghost in Peter is the same as the Holy Ghost in you. When sick people get near you, before you even lay hands on them, they will get well. Acknowledge it. Accept it. Ask that the Lord will do it in your life. Activate it. Let it work. It will work. Brother, I said it will work. Sister, it will work. Let's come back now to Second Corinthians chapter 6, the latter part of verse, of verse 16. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will dwell in them. He will dwell in you. If the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in a mortal body. He that raised him from the dead will quicken your mortal body. And even, even now, even now, he will quicken your mortal body in Jesus' name. Everything you are supposed to do, you will do. You will not say, I'm down today. No, you are now up. You will not say, I am sick. You will be well in Jesus' name. By his stripes, we're healed. But Jesus is not coming back to bear stripes all over again. 
Jesus is not coming back. Every time sickness knocks at the door, that he will be beating again. Those same stripes, as we appropriate, as we accept, you are well in Jesus' name. Verse 17, we have for come out from among them. What does that mean? It doesn't mean something physical. Come out from among them. Unbelievers live where we live. And we live where the unbelievers live. And we're not saying, okay, I will not go home tonight. I will not stay in that house. I am coming out because they are there. No, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Anywhere you are, it is your father's land. Come out from among them. It means come out of their way of thinking. Come out of their opinion. Come out of their superstition. Come out of their corruption. Come out from their ideologies. Don't think like they think. And don't talk like they talk. I come out. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters. Tell me. Says the Lord Almighty. Look up here. What he, the president of a great country, whatever country you think about as great, America, or the prime minister in Europe, in the UK, or any other country, says he now adopts you as his own son, as his own daughter. And he has, because he's president, because he's king, he has the greatest of all facilities to take care of you mentally, physically, and in every way. And he says, now you are my son. You'll walk in freedom. You'll walk in dominion. You'll walk in confidence. And you will go about, you'll say things are different now. You will not be thinking of what happened yesterday, but now you are the son and the daughter of the greatest human person on earth. But look at this, and I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters. Tell me the final words there says the Lord Almighty. The Almighty calls you his own son. The Almighty God in heaven calls you his own daughter. Things are different now. And the power of that new nature will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You understand that verse? It says we all, one by one, you stand before Christ and you look at the life of Christ, no sin, no sickness, no evil, no oppression, no defeat. You stand before that image of Christ and you are looking at Christ. You are not looking at human being. You're not looking at even yourself, what you were last week, what you were before. You're looking and gazing upon the glory of the Lord. And it says, without you doing any other thing, looking at Christ, looking at Christ, the author of the finish of your faith, looking at Christ, it says, 
you are being changed to the same image. You need to understand that one. You are being changed to the same image. Is it from shame to shame? From weakness to weakness? From oppression to oppression? From crying to crying? From regret to regret? Things are different now. Change into the same image from glory to glory. As by the Spirit of the Lord. Who is that talking about? I said, who is that talking about? Talking about you. It will be done in Jesus' name. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Reading from verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ. Remember? We crucified with him. Remember? We die with him. Remember, we are buried with him. Remember, now we rise with him. Let me remind you. Before Jesus died, Judas could betray him. The Pharisees could take hold of him. The soldiers could nail him to the cross. And then he died. But that wasn't the end of the story. The end of your story has not come. And then he rose. Do you know the difference between the risen Christ and the Christ who lived on earth before he was crucified? Now he could go through the door without even touching the door. Now, the Pharisees could not touch him anymore. And they could not take him anymore and do what they used to do. And it says, now you are identified with Christ. And you are risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection your concentration, your focus, your love, your very heart, set your affection on things above and not things, not on things on the earth. If you think too much of things on the earth, you'll be asleep. If you think too much of the things on the earth, you'll be powerless. You're thinking of this, you're thinking of this, you're thinking of that. Think of things on high for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God ye are dead the old life is dead are you here my people and your life tell me is hid go on with Christ go on in God, you are traveling somewhere. And because of that, you kept the money that you have currency with a trusted person. Hiding that money with him. When I come back, I'll have the money. Or maybe his clothes. You gave it to him. You trust him. And before, now when you come back and you say, my trusted friend, what is the money I give you? He said, the snake has swallowed it. You believe that? You are going to accept that? He said, the termites have eaten the money. You accept that one? Tell me your life that is hid with Christ in God. My life. I said my life is hid with Christ in God. Will termites eat up your life? 
Will snakes swallow up your lie? Will the demons swallow up your lie? That life will be ever fresh, ever healthy, ever sound. He will preserve your life. He says, For ye are dead, and your life is seen with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Point number three now, a progress through focus on his displayed nature. Christ displayed his nature when he was here. Before the disciples, he, he disclosed his nature. He demonstrated his nature. And now we are going to make progress as we focus on his displayed nature. We're coming to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power he has given unto us. How many things do you have now? All things that pertain unto life and that pertain to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us. What has he called you to? I said, what did he call you to? To sickness? To shame? Called us to oppression? Calls us to humiliation? We go to the office. Unbelievers are there. He has called us that those unbelievers will have dominion over us, will be their rag, and then they'll be cleaning their legs over our head. No. Get away from that place. Don't let anybody put their feet on your clean head, on your pure head, on your heavenly head. Now he has called us unto glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us, tell me, exceeding great precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Now, look at the displayed nature, the demonstrative nature, and the declared nature of Christ that we now pursue and that is now demonstrated in our lives. Besides all this, giving all diligence, don't be lazy about it, take it, it belongs to you. Add to your faith. We have the faith that will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then virtue, virtue. If there be any virtue, meditate and think on these things. And then it talks about knowledge, the knowledge of the Lord. Where Christ is now, that is where you are. He has lifted you up. Accept that knowledge and to knowledge, temperance, self-control. Self-control, that means whatever is not your business, remove your hand from there. Whatever is going on and the Lord has not given you the right to look into it, remove your hand. You don't comment on everything that goes on around you. You don't uh, participate in anything which should not be your Lord. And this body, the temple of God, whatever should not go in there, leave it alone. Temperance. The Lord will perfect it in your life. And patience, perseverance, and godliness, the very character of God, and to godliness, 
brotherly kindness. Just be kind, be kind, like Christ will be kind. Anywhere, everywhere, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, if these things be in you, as they were in Christ, and abound, and expand, and remain, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Barrenness is taken away. Spiritually, is taken away. Physically, is taken away. You will not be unfruitful anymore in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you go now, you go with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The knowledge that gives us victory. The knowledge that gives us dominion. The knowledge that translates into power in our lives. It will be done in Jesus' name. Let there be no doubt in your mind. We have the divine nature. And that divine nature will work in every life in Jesus' name. Acknowledge that divine nature in your heart. Aspire towards that divine nature, the development and the growth. Ask in prayer, accept, appropriate, move up, ascend, and advance. The time has now come. Everyone without exception we will activate that divine nature every time we meet any challenge in Jesus' name. You see anyone sick, activate that divine nature. You see any child depressed, having sorrow, activate that nature. Kindness will flow through you unto them. Love will flow through you unto them. You will possess the victory and you will spread the victory everywhere you go in Jesus' name. I got something. I said I got something. Rise up and acknowledge. Rise up and acknowledge the divine nature. It's yours. It's yours. Accept it. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the revelation of your word in my life today. Acknowledge it. Don't say you are poor. Don't say you have nothing. Don't say you are sickly. Don't say you are sinful. Don't say you are weak. Don't say you are a rag. For everybody to be walking on, you have the divine nature. God dwells in you. The Spirit dwells in you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, if anyone opens the door, I will come in. It's there. And because it's there, you're not a loser, you're a winner. You're not weak, you're strong. You're not sick, you're well. You're not poor, you're provided for. He meets all the needs of your life. And then you can even spill it over to your neighbor, to your brother, to your sister, to the people around you. Activate that divine nature. You must acknowledge you have it before you can, before you can activate it. Aspire, ask, it shall be given unto you. Knock, and you shall find. Seek to be given unto you, you'll find. And when you knock, the door will be open. Accept. God is who he says he is. I am what he says I am. I have what he says he has given me. I have what he says I have. He says I have the divine nature. Thank you, Lord, I have. He says I'm a partaker. 
Thank you, Lord. I am a possessor, a partaker. Accept, appropriate, with thanksgiving, appropriate. I have what he says I have. I can do what he says I can do. I possess what he says I possess. It's mine. And now let that divine nature work. Express it. Spread it. The faith. Express it. The virtue. Express it. The knowledge. Express it. The temperance. Accept, ex express it. The godliness, express it. The patience, express it. The charity, express it. You have it because he says you have it. And as you go through life, activate that divine nature and let the goodness of God flow through you to all people around you. You're victorious. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name we pray. Anyone having the divine nature there? I said, anyone having divine nature there, I pray it will be visibly demonstrated in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Your weakness is gone. Sickness is gone. Doubt is gone. Unbelief is gone. I am strong. Let the weak say, the Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the revelation of what we have in Christ and what we have through the knowledge of Christ. We are partakers of the divine nature. And Lord, we pray the problems that defeated us in the past will no more defeat us from today in Jesus' name. We overcome sin. We overcome sickness. We overcome evil power. We overcome darkness. We overcome oppression. And we live in the activation of the divine nature in Jesus' name. Any of our brethren who are weak, in faith, we lift them up right now. I will pray, Lord, the energy of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit will penetrate into everyone right now in Jesus' name. Touch everyone miraculously. Transform everyone miraculously. And let the reality of this divine nature be demonstrated through the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, and through the name of Christ, in Jesus' name. Help every one of us as your people to grow up in Jesus' name. We now ascend, we now advance, and we're seated in heavenly places together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let victory follow everyone, everywhere. Amen. The children of the conqueror will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Amen. On the road, keep your people. Amen. At home, keep your people. Amen. In the night, keep your people. Amen. Greater is he that is in each of us than anything, anyone in the world in Jesus' name. Let there be confirmation in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. 
In Jesus' name we pray.